Chapter 5 Minerals and Energy Resources In this video, I intend to break this chapter into two parts. In one part, we will get to know about mineral resources and in the other, we will read about energy resources. So let's get started with the minerals part. Minerals are both metallic and non-metallic in nature. Some of the examples of metallic minerals are iron ore, manganese, nickel, cobalt, copper, lead, tin, bauxite, etc. And some of the examples of non-metallic minerals are mica, salt, potash, sulfur, granite, limestone, marble, and sandstone. And then some examples of precious minerals are gold, silver, platinum, etc. These were all minerals and the way we human use them or extract them for our needs and that's what turns them into mineral resources. Now where do we find them? We find them in earth's crust embedded in the rocks. Later on these minerals are extracted with the process known as metallurgy. Because these all minerals hold value only after refinement. You cannot simply take raw material and ask people to make use of it. Now take a look around and see almost everything around us is made up of these minerals. Cars, buses, trains, aeroplane, machines, roads, you name it. Minerals are even present in the food that we consume. If a body lacks certain minerals, we can feel the need. I hope you understand the entire picture that I'm trying to project about minerals. Till now, humankind has identified over 2000 minerals. Though the number seem to look small, but it is the combination of elements that give rise to other minerals. And this combination is an ongoing process. Because elements have some physical and chemical properties. Geologists use these properties to classify the minerals. By tweaking these properties, it gives rise to new minerals. I hope you're getting what I'm trying to say. Have a look at this classification of minerals. Energy minerals, we will read about it later on. For now, just get to know the names. Now we will read about where are these minerals found. Minerals are usually found in ores and we have to extract it to commercially use it. We know that everything that we want in this world has a cost associated with it. Nothing is free. Before extracting these minerals, it is important to find out where they are embedded in the rock, where their location is and how they look. Because you don't want to end up mining the wrong place and extract the wrong thing. You must remember, the cost of extraction is not cheap. Minerals generally occur in these forms. First one is in igneous and metamorphic rocks. Igneous rocks are those rocks that are formed through the cooling and solidification of magma or lava. Granite is a fine example of igneous rock. Metamorphic rocks are those rocks which has been changed by extreme heat and pressure. They have been heated, squashed or stretched over the long period of time. Now this causes massive physical and chemical change. Marble is a fine example. Minerals are usually found in the cracks, gaps or joints of these rocks. They are formed when minerals are in liquid, molten and gaseous form. That is how they get inside the rocks. Because a solid cannot get into another solid, right? So for millions of years, they cool and solidify forming major metallic minerals like tin, copper, zinc and lead. Minerals also occur in sedimentary rocks. This is the third form of rock after igneous and metamorphic. These rocks are formed by the process of deposition, which also means they are found in layers, one top of another. A good example is beneath the water bodies like ocean, sea. You will see fine layers of sedimentary rocks. They have been formed by accumulation and concentration of organic particles, dead water organisms, plants, etc. Over the time, they form layers. It can also be said that most of the fossils are present in this type of rock. That is why to extract fossil fuels like oil, petroleum, natural gas, we go to seabed. Another place where minerals are found is where there is decomposition of surface rocks. And this phenomena occurs with the help of running water, rainfall, wind activity, etc. So what happens is all the soluble content of the rock washes away with water and wind leaving behind ores. Bauxite is extracted this way. And the fourth place where minerals are found is soil. Alluvial soil has a lot of minerals, especially in the regions of valley flows and at the base of hills. I'm not talking about the alluvial soil that you get from the riverbed due to running of water, because they are renewed every now and then. 
whereas we need minerals that have taken a millennium to form. Gold, silver, tin and platinum are most important among such minerals. And the last place where you will find minerals is ocean water. It contains vast quantities of minerals, but it is too scattered to be used for any economic purpose. Common salt, magnesium and bromine are extracted from ocean water. Now we will read about the distribution of major minerals in India. The first one is ferrous minerals. They account for about three-fourths of the total value of production of metallic minerals. And it is essential for the development of metallurgical industries. Now metallurgical industries are those industries which deal with the properties of metals and the production and purification. They basically give minerals some economical value. India also exports a lot of ferrous minerals after having sufficient stock for itself. Now under ferrous minerals, the first mineral that we are going to read about is iron ore. I have made a small separate video on ores of iron. I strongly recommend that you watch that. It's a short video, not going to take much of your time. This video will tell you about the ores of iron and where they are located in India. So link to the video is in the description. You can also click the info card available at top right corner of this video screen. Moving to the second mineral which is manganese. It's mainly used in the manufacturing of steel. There is an estimate that 10 kg of manganese is required to manufacture 1 ton of steel. It is also used in manufacturing of bleaching powder, insecticides and paints. Now Orissa is the largest producer of manganese ores in India. We now move on to the second type of metallic mineral which is non-ferrous mineral. In this mineral you will not find iron. India doesn't have a high reserve of non-ferrous minerals. Now some of the minerals that comes under non-ferrous mineral are copper, bauxite, lead, zinc and gold. These are used in electrical metallurgical industries. Let's read a little about copper. India does not have high reserve of copper. However, it is malleable, ductile and a good conductor. Malleable means it can be beaten into thin sheets. Ductile means it can be turned into wires like electrical wires. Copper is mainly used in electrical cables, electronics and chemical industries. For example, in chemical industry, copper plating is done on the positive terminal of a battery so that it can pass the current efficiently. Copper in India is found at Balaghat mines in Madhya Pradesh, Singbam district of Jharkhand and Khetri mines in Rajasthan. Now we will read about the second non-ferrous mineral, bauxite. It is an ore of aluminium. It is from bauxite, a clay-like substance that alumina and later aluminium is obtained. Aluminium has good conductivity and great malleability. That is, it can be easily beaten into thin sheets. India's bauxite deposits are mainly found in Amarkantak Plateau, Maikal Hills and the Plateau region of Bilaspur, Katni. So far, we have read about metallic minerals. Now it's time to read about non-metallic minerals. The first non-metallic mineral that we will read about is mica. It splits easily into thin sheets. These sheets can be so thin that a thousand can be layered into a mica sheet of a few centimeter high. The color of mica ranges from black, green, red, yellow or brown. It is the necessary mineral used in electric and electronic industries because of the qualities like resistance to high voltage and insulating properties. Now mica deposits are found in the region of Chota Nagpur Plateau, Jharkhand, Rajasthan and Andhra Pradesh. The next non-metallic mineral is limestone. It is a rock mineral. It is found in sedimentary rocks. Limestone is the basic raw material for the cement industry and essential for smelting iron ore in the blast furnace. Limestone is found in the region of Andhra Pradesh, Madhya Pradesh, Rajasthan, Gujarat and Tamil Nadu. And the next topic of this chapter is conservation of minerals. So far we had read how minerals are important in our day-to-day -day life and minerals are also main inputs of many big industries. The fact that we are rapidly consuming mineral resources, the same resources which have taken millions of years to form, now that's not a good sign. That is what this entire topic of conservation of minerals is all about. Mineral resources are finite and they are non-renewable. Remember that. To tackle this problem, we need to enhance our existing technologies that process these minerals. We need to come up with ways that minimizes wastage, 
Recycling of metals using scrap metals again and again is another great step towards conserving minerals. Now it's time to read about the second part of this chapter, which I mentioned at the beginning if you all remember. In this part, we will cover energy resources. Energy is required for all activities to cook, to provide light and heat, to move vehicles and drive machineries in industries, everything needs energy. The most common method of generating energy is through fuel like coal, petroleum, natural gas, uranium and from electricity. Energy resources can be classified as conventional and non-conventional sources. The meaning of conventional is old method, classic way. So if you look at firewood, cow dung cake, coal, petroleum, natural gas and electricity. These all methods are in use from long time and that is what is the meaning of conventional source. Non-conventional source are those which are modern, new. It is still not out in fully fledged manner like solar, wind, tidal, geothermal, biogas and atomic energy. Conventional sources are not eco-friendly. They cause a lot of pollution and damages the environment. Whereas non-conventional sources are expensive, they are totally eco-friendly and is sustainable. So only the cost part needs to be tackled so that everyone can make use of it. In the next topic, we read in detail about all the individual sources of conventional and non-conventional energy. I'm talking about coal, petroleum, natural gas, electricity, solar, wind, tidal, geothermal, biogas and atomic energy. So what I intend to do is I'm going to cover all of this in a separate short video which will be to the point so that you can refer the video directly without having to search for it in this video. I will put the link in the description and activate the info card. So we skip to the next topic, conservation of energy resources. Energy is a basic requirement for economic development. Major sectors like agriculture, industry, transport, commercial and domestic, they all need inputs of energy. Since independence, consumption of energy in all forms has been steadily rising all over the country. Hence, we need to develop a sustainable path of energy development. We need to look for a way that meets the present demand and saves for the future generation as well. Increasing the use of renewable energy sources are a good option. And some of the ways that we can save energy is something that we have already heard about. They are using public transport systems instead of individual vehicles, switching off electricity when not in use, using power saving devices and using non-conventional sources of energy like wind, solar, etc. These are a bit costly, but if we can work on the cost, then India can benefit out of it in a huge way, since India is a tropical country and sunshine is in abundance. And with this, we have come to an end of this chapter. Make sure you don't forget to watch the other extended video in which I covered all sorts of conventional and non-conventional sources of energy. As usual, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. If you enjoyed these videos and see a purpose behind watching them, please like the video and comment down below. Until then, catch you guys later and talk to you guys on the next one. Peace.